Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. 
Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws. our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. O God, who has at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. That for the epistle is written in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Here endeth that for the epistle.
be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said unto his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome again to St. George the Martyr Anglican Church on this Pentecost Whit Sunday day. As I always remind people each year, the name Whit Sunday is unique, I think, to the Anglican Church. And in the Anglican Church, there's even fewer that actually use the word still. But Whit Sunday is a traditional uh, term for this day simply because of the color of the vestments that those to be baptized on this day would wear. Of course, they would be wearing white robes. Um, it was more traditional to be baptized on Easter Sunday in the history of the church. But in merry old England, it's quite chilly at that time of year. And sometimes they would bump it out a little bit to Pentecost. And Whit Sunday is the name that was given to this uh, special day, really the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon us after the ascension of Christ. Um, and don't blink, because the seasons are coming quick here. It's not going to be Whit Sunday or Whit Tide much longer before we're into Trinity. Enjoy it while it's here. Anyhow, we have a few announcements for you uh, today. Uh, first of all, there's a vestry meeting today after coffee hour, which I always say everyone's invited, especially the vestry members, are invited to come to the vestry meeting today uh, during the coffee hour, or just, the, just after the coffee hour. Um, I want to point out to you, first of all, another thing. Uh, there is a misprint in the bulletin. Our recessional hymn is 376. I think it might be listed as 378. So if you want to sing the correct hymn along with the <laughs> organ, follow the board over there. I won't say anything after this. Just you'll know when you're bringing, reading the wrong words. So 376 is the recessional hymn today. Uh, all, of course, uh, the month of June, the last two years, uh, Bob Glick has been on vacation up in Pennsylvania, so we welcome this year our choir master, Brian Kirby, who also is an organist, obviously. Thank you for playing uh, for these next uh, several Sundays here at St. George. I want to um, point out to you also the rideshare ministry that we're trying to start at St. George's. Uh, there are two slots open for people to help with transportation this week, and they need to be signed up and communicated with the person who needs it as soon as possible so that appointments don't have to be canceled. Um, it would be really helpful. If anybody doesn't have anything to do on the dates that you see out there this week, um, please do help. This is Carl uh, Countryman we're speaking of, and needs transportation to a couple of appointments. Uh, please do uh, act now uh, and uh, help, help out. Uh, Carl, who is without transportation. I want this ministry to take off because I can see the future. The future is a need for transportation for others. So I'm hoping that this works and that um, those of us that are sitting at home waiting for something to do would notice that there's others sitting at home without transportation and we would put these people together. Uh, that would be a great thing for our parish, I believe. Uh, we're, you'll notice we're praying today. We always uh, pray for Bill and Madeline, but let, let us offer a special prayer for Bill uh, today who had uh, s what we believe is a seizure on Thursday, Friday, Friday, and fell and hit his head a little bit. So he's in the hospital now. They're checking him out, observing him. He'll be going home soon. But still, that was a bit of a, um, a setback for the, for the Davies. Uh, please do continue to pray for Bill and Madeline <coughs> Davy, There may be a transportation need coming up, see? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Anyhow, um, in terms of announcements, we're down to birthdays here. Let me see if I've got anything that I'm missing. Oh, vacation. The Rivards. <laughs> the Rivards are going on vacation. Uh, for, we're 
flying out tomorrow. We'll be back towards the end of the month. So it's a real one, a uh, real vacation. And uh, all of the services that are normally scheduled are still on, including uh, the noon service on Wednesdays. Father Stokes Smith will take all of those. And the first Sunday that I'm gone, Trinity Sunday. And then Trinity 1, Father Paul Stern will be here. If anything happens during the time that I'm gone, please do call Father Stokes Smith. He is a well-trained, experienced priest. He can help. Um, and I'm not going to be able to get a flight back uh, to help. So uh, he's agreed to, to take uh, any, any needs that, that uh, may uh, happen whilst I'm gone. That's all for announcements today. Please do stand with me and turn in your prayer books to page 597 as we give thanks this day for the birthdays of Janet Hoyle, Janet Dooley, Virginia Kate Kirby, Ann Green, Braden Stitt, William Patterson, Donald Mercer, Joy and Micah Peak, Bill Davey, Holly Pace, David Sinclair, Sophia Bourne, Carol Loveridge, Glenna Stitt, and Sam Harrison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sermon hymn this morning is hymn 369. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Moses ascended Mount Sinai to meet with God, the scriptures indicate that he was alone, and in the time that Moses was on Mount Sinai, the people became impatient. Their hearts became hard. What has become of this Moses? We're tired of waiting. He has abandoned us, probably, and now we're going to do as we wish. And we wish to make a God for ourselves to worship. 
Moses descended from the mountain and brought with him the law in which God intended to reveal his holy character to his people. But before Moses could present it, they had already transgressed it. They had put another god before him. They had created a graven image and bowed down to worship it. And who knows what other transgressions were going on at the wild party in Moses' absence. The hearts of the people were hard. But by the time Moses descended from the mountain with a second copy of those commandments, they understood that there was a reason to be humble and to obey. Because behind those laws stood a God who could do something about pride and disobedience. As evidence, the golden calf was ground down into powder, mixed into water, and they were forced to drink it to consume their little God and to reincarnate him a few hours later in the most unpleasant way. Generations before this, the people that God had created had a similar thought. We are tired of waiting. We're going to create our own Mount Sinai, a tower, in fact. Where is this God that has created us? We will build for ourselves a tower that will ascend to achieve his heights. We will draw him out, see him for ourselves on our own terms. We will see the world as he sees it from on high, as his partner or his rival or even his replacement, the pathetic Tower of Babel. Somewhere in the middle of construction, the impatience and pride and willfulness of these people displeased God enough for him to show his wrath quite gently. Since they would not speak with him and, were, and gone were the days of conversing with his creation in the cool of the day, he made it so that they could not speak even to each other. Their languages were confused, and they were scattered. And so at Mount Sinai, the law was written on tablets of stone for people with hearts of stone. At the Tower of Babel, the languages were confused for those who conspired to rival God in pride. Now we are in the midst of a season in the church where feasts are coming and going very quickly. Today, we must stop and recognize the most important birthday of the church, the day when the Holy Spirit first descended upon the followers of Christ at Pentecost. With the Spirit of God dwelling in us, we became not only the followers of Christ, taking the name Christians, but the body of Christ. With Christ dwelling in us and us dwelling in Him, the church. Before this happens, in the first two chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, the followers of Christ are doing something that the people of God at the foot of Mount Sinai had not done. We were patient, and we waited. The instruction, in fact, was to wait. And the law of God was written again for us, but this time not on tablets of stone for hearts of stone, but on the flesh of our hearts, as St. Paul would say in 2 Corinthians. God came to make his dwelling amongst us and within us by the Holy Spirit, as Jesus says in the Gospel for today. Obedience out of fear of retribution was replaced by obedience out of reciprocal love with the God who impressed himself upon the heart, not upon the stone. In the first two chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, the followers of Christ are doing something that the builders of the Tower of Babel failed to do. We did not trust in ourselves alone at that early day of the church. And as a result of that humility and patience, we saw the languages of foreigners, once confused at Babel, now unified by the power of the Holy Spirit, and a foretaste of heaven was given where all people of all languages understood each other. And there was patience and humility and a loving obedience. The Holy Spirit descended that day in a special way, not upon a man-made mountain, and not even upon the great Mount Sinai, but in a very unassuming room in Jerusalem, simply called now the Upper Room, 
and the only reason it's called the upper room is that there was a lower room. That's it. We may pause here and breathe in the glory of that truth. Christ said to his disciples that it was expedient for them that he departed. It would be very hard for them to understand that. Because if he did not depart, then the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would not come. Well, he did depart, and he did ascend. And the Holy Spirit, mysterious as ever, came down to dwell within us and make us the church. It was a marvelous fulfillment of prophecy and a reversal of the errors of the past. And after we've paused to appreciate this, for this brief season of Whitsuntide, or Pentecost, we can reflect that ever since the promised comforter came to the followers of Christ, it has been roses and candy and harmony and unicorns and picnics ever since in the church. And everyone gets along and we're universally united and neither ethnicity nor history nor differing interpretations of the scripture have ever divided us. If only that were true, but it is no news flash to tell you it's not true. In fact, in the letters of St. Paul, there is proof that it didn't take long after the sign of the tongues of fire and the unified languages in the upper room when the rubber would meet the road. If Pentecost was the birthday party, indeed where gifts were given, it was only a few decades later that St. Paul was writing to a new church at Corinth, trying to get the Christians to stop fighting over their gifts. Have you ever had a Christmas celebration with children where they got gifts for which they should be happy, and eventually they're fighting over the gifts? The coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church was a miraculous partner to the ascension of Christ, but it was not a magical event that would remove from us any of our original need for humility, patience, and obedience to God. In fact, the pattern was simply continued from the Old Testament, and we find that what was needed in Genesis at the Tower of Babel and what was needed at Exodus at the foot of Mount Sinai is once again needed in the body of Christ, even with the blessing of the Holy Spirit, humility, patience, obedience. And at the outset of the church all the way up until today when we enjoy still the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our own church, so much of the time what is needed from us as we work together is humility and patience and obedience to God. St. Paul, in the second set of scriptures given for this day in the prayer book, gives to the Corinthians the image of the union of a body, saying, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. The Spirit is given to everyone to profit everyone, just as members of a body exist to benefit the other members of that body, so it is in the body of Christ, the church. This is not a theory. You know it by experience, even in this church, St. George's, where the Holy Spirit is clearly at work. And indeed, people are gifted in different ways. It's obvious. Not everyone has a word of wisdom, but some do, and they're meant to share it. And not everyone has exemplary faith. We all have faith, but you know as well as I do, some have exemplary faith by which they are meant to encourage others. Not everyone has exceptional discernment, but some do. Not everyone has a gift of healing or encouragement or hospitality or mercy, but some do. And they're meant to share those for the benefit of all. And it's not always immediately evident how all these people are supposed to work together every day. But as each member of the body is part of that body and serves its purpose, you can be sure that you serve a purpose. And when you are sure that someone else is useless, you'll need humility. And when you're sure that your way is the only way and that it's going to work, and that it has to happen right now and everyone else can pound sand, you need patience. 
And when you are tempted to disregard the Holy Spirit and do anything that is not characterized by the fruit of the Spirit, that is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, or that just simply doesn't sound like something Christ would do or that Christ would watch or that Christ would email, you need a new measure of obedience to that same Holy Spirit. What was lacking in God's people that first time Moses ascended Mount Sinai and left them alone, and what was lacking in the people as they began construction on the Tower of Babel was humility and patience and obedience. And on this day, we thank God joyfully that the Holy Spirit has come to make us the body of Christ and that we are not orphans and that we are not left comfortless. But the call is to be godly, Christ-like people who do not quench the Holy Spirit's work in us. That call has never expired. How fascinating and wondrous and full of weight and significance is the event in that upper room at Pentecost in Jerusalem all those centuries ago. The fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah and Jeremiah and others finally comes about. The meaning of Jesus' many sayings about the Holy Spirit and the farewell discourse of the gospel according to St. John is finally made clear. And there is enough there to be in awe and wonder forever. But where the practicalities of the coming of the Holy Spirit are worked out are not in some faraway place, some faraway time, or in some esoteric theolo theology text. How the Holy Spirit works in the church is to be considered today and in this place, in this sacrament, and with the people sitting beside you and around you. Holy Spirit works in us through humility about ourselves and patience with each other and obedience to God. When? Well, when I'm feeding and clothing the poor in Calcutta, when I finally get there, then it will take place. When I finally purchase that plane ticket to Nigeria and preach to the Boko Haram to get them to stop terrorizing, then the Holy Spirit will be upon us. No. And yes. But no. <laughs> The Holy Spirit needs to be present in today's vestry meeting, today, in our conversation during the coffee hour just after this. It is in how we express concern for those of our parish who now suffer, or who are recovering from injury or sickness or loss or grief. And it's in how we share joy with those who are newly married or newly parents or newly graduated who are hired or retired or diagnosed or healed or whatever, where does the Holy Spirit work? In all these, we have enjoyed a healthy measure of the Holy Spirit in this church already over the past many years. May we rejoice as a part of the body of Christ that the Holy Spirit has come, and may we be ready to receive him more as the very character of God is written on our hearts and not hearts of stone in humility, in patience, and in obedience to his various callings, not out of fear, but in love, as the followers of Christ, his body, the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all.
us pray. The Holy Eucharist is offered this day to the praise and glory of God and in union with the full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord, offered to the Father on our behalf eternally. And in our Anglican prayer cycle for unity, we offer prayers this day for St. Margaret of Scotland Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, for St. Mary of the Angels Church in Laporte, Indiana, for Church of St. Andrew in Merrillville, Indiana, for St. Augustine Mission in Valparaiso, Indiana, and for Trinity Parish in Prairie Village, Kansas. The Holy Eucharist is also offered this day with special prayers for John, for Richard, for Morgan, for Donna, for Ronnie, for Bill and Madeline, for Deborah, Amy, and Dolores, for Paul, Chuck, and Carol, for Bill, Jeff, Randy, for James and Daryl, for Bishop Payne, and for all those that we name in the quietness of our hearts. The Holy Eucharist is also offered this day with special prayers for all of our clergy and congregations in Haiti and in India and in the Philippines and in Ecuador. We offer prayers for all pregnant mothers in distress and for the safety of all unborn children. We offer prayers also for those who have suffered loss in the recent shootings in our country. We pray for our own community, for our safety, and also for all those who are searching for a church, that they would find St. George's. We offer prayers this day for all those who suffer now in the conflict of Ukraine, and we pray for an end to that suffering and that conflict soon. We pray that all those who suffer persecution for their faith in Christ would have a special measure of this Holy Spirit at this time, especially those that suffer in the countries of North Korea, of China, of Afghanistan, of Nigeria, especially Pastor Nestor and Pastor Jagadish. The Holy Eucharist is also offered this day for the peaceful repose of Richard, of Chuck, of Mallory, of Dina, of all those that have lost their lives in the recent shootings, and of all the faithful departed. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. You who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, 
by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve to please thee in newness of life, in glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Ghost came down as at this time from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and lead them into all truth, giving them boldness with fervent zeal, constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou of Thy tender mercy didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in His holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and good goodness. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the comes under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, that our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Make this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thanked. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Make this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thanked. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Who can be this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
to be preserved by body and soul and to the last thing of it.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee, for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to folk of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Son, we beseech thee, Almighty God, thy Holy Spirit, into our hearts, that he may direct and rule us according to thy will, comfort us in all our afflictions, defend us from all error, and lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the same Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Depart in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 